physical characteristics of the neighborhood itself. And the buildings themselves are pretty old, you know, relatively old. They're structurally, many of them are structurally unsound. And um, a lot of them uh, just need renovation. Of course, that means money, especially in today's market. I think America, after the energy crisis, has finally found out that you just can't throw away old buildings. It's a very expensive thing. It's simply called gentrification, where you get a high economic group that can afford to renovate these houses. It means that people can buy relatively inexpensive housing and can, by pumping money into them, raise uh, the value of the neighborhood. And, well, what's happening on the west side is that it's a conglomeration of young professionals and other people that are pumping money into it. And then not only that one or two houses are getting rebuilt, but a whole neighborhood's getting rebuilt. Uh, has this happened before? Yes. It, it happened in Society Hill. You look at 1950, 1946 of Society Hill, you'll see that it was mostly a very deteriorated ghetto kind of environment. Now, through the efforts of city planning and, uh, and private developers, uh, look at what it is today. Houses that were then worth, that were gotten for five, seven thousand dollars, are now worth up to sixty, seventy thousand dollars. And uh, you know, the architecture of the houses themselves, uh, the stairs to uh, to the houses are, are made out of marble. You know, something you don't find any day. Very finely cut stone. Workmanship that maybe was done by by uh, Italian craftsmen when they came over a while ago. Uh, the, the flooring inside, old flooring. How many houses do you see these days with old flooring? Uh, it's the quality of it is just superb. Old railings, uh, old craftsmanship, uh, high ceilings. Uh, you know, today's built. Why are 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 ceiling high slow? It's economically. You know, you stack one on top of another. Very easy system. The craftsmanship into the woodwork, uh, doors, uh, the stained glass that that's in the houses. Uh, it's funny. There's a stained glass ring going around in Philadelphia with the ceiling on stained glass and selling it because it's such a valuable commodity now. It's hard to get, you know. I mean, here you have a landlord that owns a house and sees the potential of, of an investment he's made some years ago of almost being four times what, what, what it was, and he's taken it, and it means that he has to get these renters out and to move uh, other people that want to buy the house or want to invest money in the house. It's just a phenomenon of uh, big economic power moving over the little guy. I know it's a classic case, but it's a reality. And, uh, and the question is, what's going to happen now? Here we Level. 
which is a special program put through called Grant Supplement. And this is sort of low, low rate. So it's going to be more than the, uh, the poverty, which is the basic rent. Low, low uh, is supplement rent, and only 40% of the apartments can be under this bracket. Uh, as a private developer buys a house and turns it into a high income unit for uh, middle and upper income people at 250 and up a month, uh, obviously the, the person who is paying a federal basic rent of 133 uh, is never in the world going to approach that. Right, you want me to talk? <laughs> well, what I got to try to say, you know, what I'm going to try to do is anyhow try to give me a another place, you know. Well, you see, I feel it, yeah, because uh, the way things going now, you know, he's, he's like a brother of money, you know, because we paying a lot of money in the house. Right? It's pretty hard to get an apartment over here too, because the way the house is going now, you know, uh, breaking the house down and uh, if you try to get an apartment over here, where are you going to get it? And uh, if you get in a small apartment or whatever, it costs you a lot of money. Like I'm paying $110 in that place now. It's a lot of, it's a lot of money for two rooms. See? Now, community corporation is, is, is going to experiment to, to develop some houses for home ownership itself. Your, your, uh, well, we in a sense are advocates for the community. Uh, we want to see them get proper housing, decent housing. We want to see them get treated fairly. We want to see them grow properly and through the economic system. And perhaps move on, buy their own home, and enjoy all the things that uh, the so-called regular American does. Well, I don't know what the decision was going to happen anyway. Well, the house, somebody got to come and see it. Would you say that? Would you tell us to get over here, 1750? Oh, yeah. Like at least a couple weeks ago, it was real cold. You know, the weather. And, uh, and the house, you know, he was done nothing. You know, I don't know where to be living in a house like that, you know. You complain to him, but he don't do nothing about it. I never see the guy, you know. I just go and pay the man over here, and uh, see the man over there. When it's cold, they don't give it a hit. Right? So, sometimes. No, you're all going to use it because that's a... No, when that house, you know, when it's cold, you know, it's funny, uh, give it no heat, right? When it's real hot, then they put the heat on. Uh, you know, it's going crazy. You know, that guy, I guess, is not. So, and otherwise, the house gets a lot of air inside. Right. Right. Sometimes I can see the... The, 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 uh, uh, the cordon, you know, the cordon? Going like this, man, like, like a... So the storm's coming in the house. So how you plumbing? The plumbing, uh, fair. I'm going to say fair. I ain't going to say it's good and I ain't going to say it's bad. I'll say fair. What, what food do you live in? I live, no, I live in the third floor back. Third floor? Right. Third floor. 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 Well, I believe that one in the middle is say 150. Do they have the same problem? No, the whole people around have the same problem. Because that house used to be come back before. To them? To them? To them? And then they said, well, I hear about it. See, the men don't pay. Well, I guess not what's going on. The men pay of killing it. See, the men don't really pay the death in the house. Because I come in one time, I can't live in a big book, and the men, and the guys, Come in and shut up the guest house. You say, why? You shut the guest house. We can't win here, man. They say, because the men don't pay the guest. But the men didn't pay you. You didn't pay the guest. But you pay your rent. Right. 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 In other words, you know, something's going on. Whatever it is, no, I don't know. I'm so angry because I pay my rent on that stuff. I know who to call. You know? I know who to call. Who's uh that? -huh. I can call over here in the city hall. You know? Uh, give them people over to check it out. I do uh, see the area changing demographically, and it's uh, the push, as you describe it, is coming from a variety of factors, mainly economic. And I take you back to around uh, 1967, when uh, Smith Klein and the and some elements of the Spring Garden Service Association, representing the Western men, uh, did uh, uh, oral battle in debate over bringing in uh, uh, turnkey to public housing for the community. It wasn't on prior to that time. And 
we came out for it. And we developed a plan to bring in uh, public housing turnkey Street, which is uh, an economic masterpiece, if you will. We brought in uh, our city manager, Mr. Clark. We brought in two and a half million dollars worth of housing at a cost of six hundred eleven thousand dollars. And the way we did that, we formed a triad agreement between a builder, Hertzfeld and Horowitz, the Philadelphia Housing Authority, the federal government and PHA, and some clients. And the agreement was that we would uh, see the center uh, and PHA uh, select tenants from the community to get into new housing. Uh, that would meet all the income criteria of the government, the PHA, etc. Our concern was that in new public housing, we bring tenants from all over the city and take tenants who are here now and also in the government and put them in other areas of the city. And we wanted to, we wanted to see to ensure that there would be a, uh, a local people getting local housing. We wanted to also see that there was a, a racial mix to the house. It's a portion of the of the community. And we were, we were fought uh, tooth and nail by the Spring Garden Civic Association at that time, and they ticketed at Smith Pond at one point, and then the community people went out and ticketed the picket. And then the picket stayed off in the uh, From here, you can figure out from here over here, from 19, going down, up that way, 20 foot, that's 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 that. that, that, that. The people coming in and uh, just coming in and get the housing on the people who live here, they have to go, where, where are we going to go? On the people who live here, they have to go, where, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? When I first came here eight years ago and I went to visit a family five blocks west of here, they were in about the fifth apartment they had been able to find in this neighborhood within a two-year period. So I went to see them in February, mother and father and five little kids. And they told me that, that, that the landlord wanted to sell the house. He wanted to make a profit off of it because he had a good buyer. What he had done was to uh, cut the heat off. When they still didn't leave, he cut off the hot water. He finally cut off the electricity. By the time I saw them, all the children were sick. Dorothy was sick. Her husband, Mario, was not feeling well. Temperature outside was very cold. And they were suffering a great deal. But the landlord was able to do this because they could not find another apartment at, at that time of year in our community. And so they were forced to leave. They found themselves going up several blocks from their friends in the neighborhood. And I think it was hard on that family to be so far away. But now I see the same thing happen one block west of here, even two houses from here. That the rent has gone up, that when the landlord wants somebody out, he simply cuts off the heat, electricity, whatever will make that place so uncomfortable that the people have to leave. And so again, the children are sick, the old folks are sick, and they suffer a lot in the winter. Why? Because some people see our community as property and not as people. That's it.